Today, we're going to look at this brand new dock from Sateki. This is the Thunderbolt 4 Multimedia Pro Dock. It's for Mac and for Windows. This dock has 16 ports of connectivity, including Ethernet, Display, and USB. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing and take a look at it and then, you know, put it through its paces. So inside here we got... All right, we got a brown box. Okay, there we go. Look at that. That is a pretty large dock, and I've seen some big Thunderbolt docks. And it looks like inside we have a little informational booklet. We have a Thunderbolt 4 cable, it looks like. Yep, looks like about a one meter Thunderbolt 4 cable. We have a power adapter, which is 135 watts. And we have the power cord, of course. And what's nice with this is that it actually includes a stand if you want to use this dock vertically. So you'll have the choice of using it either vertically or horizontally. And now we can get a better look at the dock with the plastic off. So starting with the front, we have two SD card slots, regular and micro. We have a USB 3.2 or 10 gigabit connection. We have a USB 2.0 connection. We have audio in and out. We got a front host port and we have a power button to turn the dock on and off. Now this is made of aluminum. It feels like a kind of dark space gray aluminum. There's a couple rubber pads on the bottom for laying horizontally. You got rubber pads on the two sides and on the back, here's the rest of the ports. We have the power in, we have two sets of displays. We'll get to those in just a moment. We have 2.5 gigabit ethernet, another 10 gigabit USB-C port. Well, the first USB-C port, but 10 gigabits two 10 gigabit USB-A and two five gigabit USB-A. And if we look at the front of the dock again, this USB port has a little power icon, which means that it gets up to 7.5 watts of power out of that USB port. So you can use that to charge an iPhone or uh, I don't know, whatever that needs seven and a half watts. Overall, the design of this dock is pretty good. I mean, it's gray aluminum and plastic and rubber, and it's similar to other docks on the market. I don't think it's overly heavy for this size and I think it looks okay. I do wanna point out that if you look back here on the back of the dock or even on the front, you're not going to find any additional Thunderbolt ports. So this dock is not going to work for a Thunderbolt pass-through to another Thunderbolt device or allow you to connect Thunderbolt accessories like really fast Thunderbolt SSDs or 10 gigabit ethernet cards or something like that. So if you're looking for a dock with more Thunderbolt capabilities, this dock may not work for you. Most of the Thunderbolt bandwidth is going to be taken up by those four display ports. And I am going to connect this up and take a look at it and test it, but I do wanna mention a couple things about the display capabilities. As you can see, we have two display port and two HDMI. On the left side, we have video group one and on the right side, video group two. Now this is going to be important because the amount of displays that you can actually connect with this dock is going to be determined by the computer that you have. For example, if you have an M1 or M2 based MacBook, then you're only going to be able to connect one external display. So you're going to be able to connect either a DisplayPort or HDMI to one of these video groups, and that's all you're going to get. If you have an M1 Pro or Pro Max or an M2 Pro or Pro Max, you can connect two displays to this dock. And to do that, you'll connect one display to group one and one display to group two. You can use one HDMI and one DisplayPort, but you can't use both on the same one unless you just want a mirrored. So now you're probably like, why the heck is there four display connections on the back? Well, if you are using a Windows computer, you will be able to use up to four displays on this Thunderbolt 4 dock. Although you have to have a computer that does support MST or multi-stream transport to be able to take advantage of all the ports. And if you're using a laptop, you won't be able to use all four plus your laptop display. And all of these ports are limited to 4K60, so you won't be able to connect a high refresh rate display or something like a six or 8K display but let me go ahead and set up a couple displays and we'll see how this guy performs. And thanks for waiting. Now I have two 4K displays sitting here on the desk. I have my M2 Max MacBook Pro and we have the Siteki dock. I have the displays connected to the dock and I have not connected anything to the computer. So we're gonna try it all together and hopefully everything just works. Right now the dock is laying horizontally on the desk, but because it does have that included stand, we can set that up in the stand. And I think it's nice to actually have that option. So with the dock ready to go, we're going to connect to the front host port. Yeah, I know. And we'll connect to the MacBook and fingers crossed, everything works. 
Give it just a second. Accessory wants to connect. We will allow it. There's one display. There's two displays. All right. That took about seven or eight seconds and we did get both displays up. So let me go ahead and see what the configuration looks like. We'll go down to displays and here we are. Built-in display. We'll change the arrangement. Which one is this? That one's over there. So that one's going to stay there. We'll do something like Great. So now I have all three of my displays. Success. And now I can bring up other windows onto the other displays to actually, you know, get some work done. If you want three displays, you better have a reason to have three displays. So we'll drag notes up over here. We'll drag mail. And that feels pretty good. It's a dual external display setup. It doesn't feel like there's any lag or issues with this because they are essentially directly connected through the Thunderbolt dock. There's nothing like display link happening in the background that kind of emulates additional video cards. These are the two supported displays from this MacBook Pro. Now, like I said, there are 16 ports on this dock and two of those ports we are not able to use on a Mac and that is the two additional display ports. We do have, again, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. We have a 10 gig USB-C connection, 10 gig USB-A, 5 gig USB-A, and on the front we do have more USB ports and the SD card readers, and I do wanna check those out real quick because sometimes docks will come with two SD card readers, but only one can be used at the same time, so I do have a SD and micro SD to plug in and see if they both come up. And we'll open up the finder and insert the full-size SD card, and wait, and there it is, there's the full-size SD card, and now I will insert the micro SD, and there we go, the micro SD card popped in here as well. So great, we can actually use both SD card slots on the stock at the same time, which is nice. I do like that the micro SD card slot is that kind of the springy lock-in connection. I feel like that's a lot better than ones that just kind of push in, but at least it feels better than the built-in slot on the MacBook Pro, which just feels like you're grinding the card into it. And next up, I wanna try out this SSD. This is an NVMe SSD in a USB 4 enclosure. Now, I've seen speeds on this drive up to about 2,500 megabytes per second, read and write. Now, because this doesn't have USB 4 or even another Thunderbolt connection to connect this to, we're not going to get anywhere near those speeds. We're going to be limited to the 10 gigabit USB connections on this dock. So let's go ahead and see what kind of speeds we get. And we'll just connect this to the back here to the USB-C connection. And we can see the drive showed up here on the Mac, so we can select it inside Blackmagic Speed Test. We'll select the target drive, Rocket Q, open up, and start that test. And the maximum speed you're going to see on a 10 gigabit drive is going to be between 800 megabytes per second and maybe close to 1,000 megabytes per second. On here, you can see we're getting about 900 megabytes right, and we're getting a bit slower, about 725 read. And those numbers are going to bounce around quite a bit as it does its test and as the drive heats up. But overall, that's pretty good for a 10 gigabit drive on here. So I don't think we're missing out on any speed with this dock. It looks like this dock is doing what it should. And the one last thing for me to check out on this dock for this video is just the power button. I'm kind of curious what happens. So press the power button. Any drives connected are going to disconnect from your computer. The monitors are going to disconnect and everything goes back to the built-in display on the Mac. If we turn it back on, should bring the monitors back up in a few seconds. And there we go. Again, it took around eight to 10 seconds for these displays to come back on. And I do want to point out that the host port connection coming from the dock can provide up to 96 watts of power to the MacBook according to Sateki. The MacBook is showing 98 watts at the moment, but either way, it's plenty of power for a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air or essentially any other laptop you want to connect to it. And that's probably all the testing I'm going to complete for this video. If you do have questions or want me to test other things specifically on this dock, let me know in the comments below. So the next question is going to be, is this Siteki Thunderbolt 4 Multimedia Pro dock worth it? Well, as always, it's going to come down to your own personal needs. In my limited experience with this dock, I feel like it has things that I can't use and it doesn't have things that I want. For example, I can only use two extra displays connected to a Mac of any kind with this dock. There's no display link technology built in to allow me to connect additional displays, so I am limited to just two. If you do connect Windows, you can get up to four displays depending on the hardware of your computer. And because there are two extra display connections built into the dock that I can't use, there's also no Thunderbolt connection on here, so I can't even use really fast storage if that's something I want to do, which that is something I want to do. I do, however, like the 2.5 gigabit ethernet built into the back of this, 
Ethernet is something I use every day because even Wi-Fi 6E is just not as reliable as hardwired Ethernet. And I have a 10 gigabit connection in my house, so I can take advantage of that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. So I would say if you're running a Windows computer and your computer can handle more than two displays and you want fast Ethernet and you just need a couple of USB ports, then this is probably a pretty good dock for you. If you're running a Mac and you use Thunderbolt accessories, then this might not be the best dock for you. But what do you guys think? Does this Satechi Thunderbolt 4 dock give you the ports that you need for your Mac? Or are you a Windows user who thinks that this is going to be perfect? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you do wanna see me do a video comparing this dock compared to something like the CalDigit TS4, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see a video looking at the Thunderbolt 4 docks that I've compared previously, take a look at this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.